welcome back to the channel. It's Jojo here, the joyous genealogist, and I'm glad to be back. And if you're new here, welcome. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad you found the channel. We are trying to get to a thousand subscribers right now so I can give away these DNA kits. So I just announced this recently, and I've been thinking about this since I started the channel, how I want to give away DNA kits. I would like to do it every single month if I could. If I can start a nonprofit or if I win the lottery. I don't play the lottery, but anywho. So the point is, when I get to a thousand subscribers, which we are 28 people away right now from a thousand subscribers 28 people so if you guys get some people to subscribe we can get this done or you yeah share subscribe yourself whatever you want to do so i'm going to give away two dna kits so that could probably that's probably going to be maybe by the end of the week i don't know let's hope so i hope so right so i have one i have one at my house and so i'm gonna have to order another one and this cell ends tomorrow so i'm gonna go ahead and order this one I looked on Ancestry and they're like $100 right now. They're not on sale. But I will hook up, you know, like hook up, but I will end up getting some of both Ancestry and my heritage. So when I do some giveaways, I'll have both varieties. So anyway, so I'm going to give away two DNA kits. I have one person particularly that I want to give one to. So I'm going to do two. I'm going to give away two because I want to make sure I do a drawing. So somebody, somebody I don't know gets one and the person that has subscribed to my channel since the very beginning who I love dearly who is so deserving of this in so many ways has come so far in her life spiritually and is a beautiful example of uh, somebody who's striving to be like Christ so I am going to give one to that person also so if you guys know how to give a or how to have a drawing online somehow for my group on YouTube, let me know. How do you do that? Or we do it through Facebook somehow through the group. So that leads me to the next thing. So I'm going to get this housekeeping stuff out of the way first. And then what we're going to talk about is the Casper Wyoming Temple Open House and how this might apply to your genealogy and family history work. So I'm going to show you a tip. Actually, I'm going to share a tip with you on how to find your relatives that possibly came across the Oregon Trail, that did come across the Oregon Trail, either through Casper or in, or up farther north. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to show you guys how to find those pioneer ancestors on your in your family tree. And two easy steps, basically. So but before that, I want to show you the Facebook group. For anybody who's new to the channel or hasn't seen this, because I don't, I don't mention this in every single video, but this is our Facebook group. I post um, videos in here. I want to do like live trainings and I tried it once and it failed, but I'm not giving up. I'm going to do it again sometime soon. So <laughs> it's getting late. So I'm being kind of goofbally. But so if you want to join the group, please do. I like I said, I post events here. I post the temple of the week. I post um all kinds of stuff. Anything related to genealogy, tips, tricks, whatever, and events going on, like the Genealogy Casey event. Also, um, I am going to... I haven't... I stopped posting the Temple of the Week because I'm going to actually dive in deeper and I'm going to do a video over the Temple for the Week. So I'm going through every single temple in the order that it was um, erected and dedicated in the, in the order it was dedicated, basically. So I'm going down the list, and we're like on 20-something right now. So I thought, I thought I would stop because I actually want to dive in deeper and like go into the dedicor dedicatory prayer or the history of that temple and go into more about it. So I think that would be cool. So I'm going to include that and more of temple news in this channel along with family history tips. So here's the group. I will leave the link in this video or you can find it in the description box of the channel. So yesterday they had the news conference for the media and Camille, President Camille N. Johnson was there, Randall K. Bennett, Elder James uh, R. Rasband, and... Um, so they were all there, and this was special to Camille because she had um, relatives who had come across the Oregon Trail through Casper, Wyoming in the 1840s or 50s. And so, yeah, it's pretty cool. All right, so there's a video here, and they show you a tour of the temple. And um, 
and then we'll talk about it after that. But it's really, I can't zoom in on it because if I zoom any bigger on the screen for you to see this, you're going to, you're going to miss out on the captions. Most likely the way this is set up. I can't, I can't, let me see if I can fix this really quick for you guys. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I just thought of something. This might help. Oh, look. Oh, that's, that's, that's helpful. Zoom is a wonderful thing. Okay. All right, you guys, let's watch this. Let's get started. If you haven't seen this yet, you got to watch it. So maybe you're listening to the video. If you are, maybe you can watch it or I'll just leave the link and you can watch it later. All right, let's get started. And I love the details. There's so many pretty details in this temple. It's gorgeous. What a glorious occasion this is for the house of the Lord to be erected here in this historic place that really represents a crossroads for so many of our pioneer ancestors. It's the house of the Lord, and what stands out is the feeling of closeness to our Heavenly Father and our Savior, the focus on the Savior, the peace and quiet and light that you feel in what can be a, a dark world for many people. Temples are the place where we make sacred covenants with God. And in return, he blesses us with an extra measure of his love and mercy and his capacity enhancing power. We are eager for the public, both here in Casper and in central Wyoming and, and elsewhere, to come and see the temple, to have a feeling of the peace that's in the temple, to understand a bit more about our doctrine and why the temple is so important to us. So the Castro Iomi Temple is just short of 10,000 square feet and short of 10 acres. Um, it's a 10 acre site. So it was erected in October 2021. It was announced in April 2021 um, by President um, Nelson. So it's going to be it's going to serve more than 15,000 members of the church in nearly 50 congregations. The temple's design motifs include the stylized versions of the Indian paintbrush, Wyoming state flower and sagebrush. Oh, here's the, here it is right here. That painting. I love it. Oh my gosh. I love it. I want that painting. I want a copy of that painting. So if you know who or how to, who, who painted that and how do I get it? It's probably a Deseret or something, right? All right. Okay. So President Nelson announced, I already said that. Okay. So I love this. He says, keep, as he announced the temples in April, he said, keep your temple covenants and blessings foremost in your minds and hearts. He said, as he announced 20 temples, including the Casper Wyoming temple. I'm not very good with this highlighting stuff, am I? So it will be the second operating temple in Wyoming. The Star Valley Wyoming Temple was dedicated in October 2016. And a temple in Cody was announced in October of 2021. So they had two announcements for two temples in 2021 in Wyoming. I forgot about that. Okay, so it so the sacred stru structure in Casper will be the church's 201st house of the Lord. There are 350 temples in operation under construction or announced worldwide. Wyoming was a significant place in the history of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saint pioneers. Latter church of Jesus Christ. Latter-day Saint pioneers traveled across the state in their westward migration to Utah in the mid-1800s. This is an especially sweet opportunity for me, said Camilla, President Johnson. 
All right, so I wanted to show you guys something that's pretty neat. If you if you're interested in seeing all the temples that have been announced that are dedicated or in um, construction, under construction, you can go to that link that I just clicked on and you can print the sheet off. And it has every single one organized by country. So I'm thinking it would be really cool to get like a map, a huge map I can put on my wall and ping all these temples once they're like dedicated, you know, completed and dedicated. And then we could, then then I could see and we could see all the temples that are dotting the earth. I think that's what I want to do. I want to get a huge map. I think I'm going to do it, you guys. What do you think? What do you think? Put it in the comments. What do you think? Is it a cool idea? I think it'd be cool. You know what would be really cool if the map like was kind of like lit up or like glow in the dark. I don't know. That would be cool. All right. If you know of a map like that, let me know. <laughs> Send me the link. Email it to me. My email's in the description box. <laughs> okay. And then we're going to go over this local history. And then, so then after this, I'm going to show you guys um, a way that you can find out what pioneers were, what, what ancestors were pioneers in your family. Okay. And you can find out what trail what trek they took to the west and like what cart company what cart company they they traveled with okay so early church history so let me zoom in on this for you so if you do want to follow along there we go bear with me i haven't done a video in a while so all right early church Early church history. Look at that. Now, I think I read about this story in the Saints book. I read it somewhere. It's so sad. So sad. So throughout... Okay, so let's start here. So early church history. So throughout the latter half of the 19th century, members of the Church of Jesus Christ Latter-day Saints gathering to the western United States traveled through Wyoming between 1847 and 1869. Tens of thousands of saints followed the Oregon Trail through what is now Casper, Wyoming, to Fort Bridger before heading south to the Salt Lake Valley. In addition to the overland trails that went through Wyoming, Casper is also home to various sites. I want to make sure you can follow along right here. Where early pioneer members of the church operated ferries to help other pioneers cross the North Platte River on their journey west. One of these sites is where present-day Fort Casper stands. In 1855, church members purchased Fort Bridger and Fort Supply and created permanent settlements that helped resupply travelers on both the Mormon and Oregon trails. Most pioneer companies traveled through Wyoming without incident. However, the Willie and Martin Handcart companies of 1856 started later in the year and became trapped in the winter snows approximately 60 miles west of Casper. This was a really sad story. This is, okay, so some 200 of the 1,075 individuals in the companies died. Others were saved by rescue parties dispatched from Salt Lake City. The first, okay, so I'll try to remember. If you remember where the, I'm pretty sure it's in the Saints too, but I know I read about it somewhere else. And if you know where you can find that story, please put it in the comments for us. All right. So the church growth, the first branch, okay, this is really interesting. So the first branch, which is a small congregation, you know, people is what we call it in our church. Um, and Casper was organized by December 1920 as part of the Western States Mission. Members met in private homes in addition to general membership. The branch included a relief society and a Sunday school. Members continued to meet in homes and rent buildings until a chapel for regular Sunday worship was built in 1938. Wow, that's quite a while later. That's quite a bit later, 87 years almost. Another larger building was begun in 1953 and dedicated in 1955. In response to membership growth, the first two stakes 
And the region were organized by Spencer W. Kimball and Howard W. Hunter, members of the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles, on October 14th, 1962. Okay, so they organized two stakes in 1962. So a stake is similar to a diocese. A diocese. I think I said that right. I hope so. Um, and then we have wards within those stakes, which is like a congregation for those who aren't familiar with our terminology. So the, the Wind River Stake included congregations in Lander and Riverton and congregations in Casper made up the Casper Stake. Today's members worship in 14 congregations in the Casper area. So if anybody watches this channel and you're from the Casper area, hey, say hi for one and tell me if you're going to go to the temple uh, open house. Even if you're not a member, you should go. You should totally check it out. They really encourage people who aren't members of the, our church to like come and see it before it gets dedicated. Cause after that you can't go in there and see it after it's dedicated, but come learn, come feel the spirit. It's amazing. It's so peaceful. It's beautiful. And it's just so peaceful. You will feel a sense of peace that you probably maybe have never felt in your life. Um, you can feel that in the temple. Um, so it is really a special place. It is a house of the Lord. So members of the church in the Casper area make regular excursions to temples to make sacred covenant, sacred covenants, building themselves and they're binding themselves and their families to Jesus Christ. Um, so I did talk about Russell M. Nelson dedicated it or not dedicated it, but announced it on April 4th. 2021 um and he says uh, uh there was something here i wanted to read he says right here he says i ponder and praise pioneers and present past and present who's con okay let me start over i ponder and praise pi praise pioneers past and present whose consecrated lives have helped to make this history today president nelson said an illusion an allusion, at least for Casper residents, to the pioneers who traveled through, through the area on their way west. Okay, so Quentin L. Cook of the Torm, Quorum of the Twelve Apostles will preside at the Casper, Wyoming Temple dedication on Sunday, November 24th at 10 a.m. And it will be broadcast to all units in the Casper Temple District. So if you aren't able to go attend in person, you'll be able to watch it live, which will be really cool. All right, so I'm going to want you guys to pop over to Family Search if you want to, or that's where I'm popping over to. So if you go over to Activities and you go to All Activities and then you scroll down a little bit, I'm going to probably zoom out. Oh, we are at 100%. Yeah. All right, now you go to view all. Okay, this is all about your ancestors. So you could click on female pioneer right here. Okay, or you can scroll down further. You can find out more. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways to research different ancestors, but I'm we're looking just at pioneers right now. And, and then if you want to go to right here, pioneers in your family tree, so discover your pioneers in your family tree and learn about their lives of courage and commitment. Okay. And I mean, there's World War records. I'm not going to get on tangent. I do it all the time when I'm doing videos. I know it's annoying. So, okay. So here you go. It's going to show you, look right here, Mary Elizabeth Hallett. It shows me, she's my second cousin, five times removed. If I click on her tree, it's going to show me my relation, how I'm related to her, on my dad's side. Okay. And you can also find out more stuff. But, like, it tells you right here. Not tells you, but shows you. Uh, stops at 20 clicks. By default, this activity stops at 20. Oh, you can drop down and add more. Oh, show up to 100. Oh. <gasps> I got 84. I didn't know that. All right. So don't, don't forget that. That's cool. And then you can just sit here and scroll. And the cool thing about finding your, finding your family pioneers 
is that there's always like a bunch, a bunch of like history, memories, you know, pictures, just documents on them. So you can do this all day long. So if you go to, there's the Nickersons. Okay, I'm going to go to Levi Nickerson. So it shows you right here, traveled with the Edward Hunter Company. Traveled for how many days, age at departure. Isn't that neat? I think it's neat. Ampleton, but I didn't have any from the Willie Martin. I'm pretty sure my dad said that somebody helped with that. So maybe they that they helped bring people over. So maybe I'll find out who that person is down the road. But this is, I mean, look, uh, this is just great. This is just great. Winter quarters. He departed from winter quarters, you guys. That's not far from me. So did Caroline. So if I go back here to Levi, I just want to go back to him. If I click on memories, because I know he has a lot of memories. Look at all these memories. Lots of stuff. I didn't I didn't put these here. Other people did. So dive in. I hope this like kind of piques your interest to find out what relatives you might have had had that came over on the Oregon Trail or through Casper. You never know. Like dive in. So that is pretty much what I wanted to show you. Okay. All right. I'm so excited to show you guys the videos for my trip. So I went to the Mound State Park, Anderson Mound State Park, Palmyra, and Kirtland, Ohio last month. And I am working on the videos for it. They're going to be separate videos. And I am like doing, I'm doing additional research to find more stuff like out about the Mound State Park because it's, it's became really interesting to me. So um, hopefully I get that one completed by this weekend and have it ready for you. But I'm really excited. I got a lot of footage at Palmyra, at Kirtland, um, especially Palmyra, really. I spent a lot of time at Palmyra. So I'm happy to share that with you. All right, you guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. <laughs> Remember to like it, share, and subscribe if you want to come back and see some more, all right? God bless you guys. I'm so excited to go back to the temple this week. I really do enjoy going to the house of the Lord. And the saints, I love this song. I wanted to play. They always play this video when you go to the Independence um, Visitor Center in Independence, Missouri. And they play, they play this a, a video. It's not this one, but they play a video that goes along with Come, Come Be Saint. But I just wanted to end this video with us reminiscing of our pioneers that came us, our ancestors who came before us and paved the way so we can have the gospel of our lives today.